We are live now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a live episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. You might be listening later, maybe watching later. And to all of you, we say thank you. Thanks for joining us for our 10th installment of our Q&A episodes. If you're unfamiliar with the format, you all send in questions to Andrew. Andrew to at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. And I don't know about them ahead of time. And then Andrew could not quite try to stump, tries to stump me, but we do these fun Q&A shows. So uh, we'll be doing that. We'll be mixing in some other stuff with that. But we're now almost a minute in. I haven't even welcomed you. Andrew, welcome. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> How are you, man? It, it seems weird to welcome me since we've it been does. chatting for yeah, a couple we, hours we, now. Yeah, we've been chatting for, for a minute here, doing some other episodes. Always enjoy recording day with you. Thank you. And if you're new to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, well, you should check it out. It's We, we do some cool stuff. Hello to you also, Stacey. Uh, if, for those of you who are coming in who might be used to First Cup, we're probably not going to have the same level of acknowledgement and engagement that we do on First Cup because we're not going to, we don't want to break the flow too much. But uh, we hope that you all will continue to respond in the chat. We may feature some of your comments depending on where things go as the show goes. So without further ado, Andrew, you want to you want to kick it off with the first question? Am I being timed? Uh, you uh, absolutely. You're always okay. Being timed. I'm always being timed. I'm always yeah. being timed. Oof, a lot of pressure. Yeah. You've you've got for those that uh, maybe don't know our format for our Q and As, uh, we give these are rapid fire Q and A. It's not just a question answer. Jeremy has a tendency to to he's got the <laughs> gift of gab as as my mom would say. Uh, very diplomatically said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to put five minutes on the clock. And we're going to ask a question. And Jeremy's going to have five minutes, no more than five minutes to answer it. All right. Let's okay. do it. Uh, and if you do happen to be watching right now, and you have a question that you want to rapid fire have Jeremy ask, go ahead and put it in the chat. And I'm, I can, I can, I'm watching the chat here as well. So, all right. Yeah. Here's the first question. This question was sent in by uh, Jean Frank, Gianfranco Moresu. Okay. And the question is, if some bullies suffer from overconfidence, quote, confidence, should we be vetting children to make sure we are not potentially giving dangerous skills to future oppressors? I think that's a constant process. I'm assuming we're talking about in the context of a martial arts school. I think that is the responsibility of everybody around that child. It's the responsibility of the parents. It's the responsibility of the instructor, the martial arts instructor, instructors. If you think of the, when I think of kids that the, the bullying tendency was strong enough that adding skill on top of it was going to be a detriment, at least for a time, that wasn't secret. That wasn't hard to pick out. You would know pretty, pretty soon. You bring a kid to class, you give them any kind of opportunity to work with a partner, and they're going to be smashing that kid around. Oh, okay. So this is somebody we've got to watch out for. This is somebody we have to engage with and train with in a different way. And if they're not old enough to understand that this behavior is unacceptable, then it may be an example of, of a kid needing to either receive private instruction or throw them in the adult class. I, I've seen that work really well, not, not permanently, but just for a short period of time. And if you have to, it's not their time. And they have to step out of class until they can not be a detriment to everyone around them. That's all I got. All right. Wow, that was quick. Fast, keeping it fast. All right. I have Excellent. the gift of gab, so I, I figured, you know, I would I would um, hold some of that gift back for myself. That's okay. Little, you know, a little bit of self-care. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, one and one of the things that uh, you know, one of the places that you get the opportunity to give your gift of gab and not have to worry about time constraints at all is on the videos that sometimes you give to your Patreon subscribers. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I like doing the videos for Patreon because I, it gives me the opportunity to explore stuff. You know, sometimes we'll do really focused things. Like when we came back from Comic-Con, we did a video. I mean, we went, it was like 20, 30 minutes. I had to splice a bunch of footage together. Sometimes it's training stuff. You know, just it's, it's on the video side, it's whatever we want to do, really, that seems fun. Because I know that the people in the Patreon are going to be, they're going to be game. They're going to be open to it. And I think that's cool. What we've done most recently with Patreon, for those of you who don't know, who aren't paying attention to our social media, we dropped another book. This one is not specifically a martial arts book. It's called 12 Months to Health. Uh, 12, what, what's the subtitle? 12 Simple, Inexpensive, and Even Free Habits to Improve Your Life. Something along those lines. I should have this memorized. I don't. But not only did we let everyone know, hey, this book is out today, but we also, for people in the right tier, they got the manuscript for free. Not a free printed copy of the book, but we gave them a Word document. Yeah, just one of the many benefits you get yeah. of being a, a Patreon subscriber. We, we, we try to stack value in there. We try to make it so overwhelmingly valuable that people don't leave. And we seem to do a good job of that. If you want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. It's the number one way that you can support what we do at Whistlekick in our, in our mission. Yeah. And it doesn't take much. You can literally, for just two bucks a month. Two, two, two of those dollars. A month. You, you get stuff. Like you will get, you know, exclusive content. That you don't get anywhere else. You know, it's it's not going to be up on this live feed. It's not going to be posted anywhere else. So two bucks a month. What's that come out to? Like forty three cents an episode, thirty seven cents an episode, something like that. Uh, twenty five cents an episode. Yeah, yeah. If if you if you think this episode's worth a quarter, if you think then... I'm worth twelve and a half cents. And you're well, but what's the value? That, what's the value of the the merch that they get? Well, right? that's like, true. You don't even have to be worth twelve and a half cents. You could be worth like I think six to seven cents, and it's still a compelling value. Yeah, yeah. So people should for sure, if they haven't done so, check yeah. it out. Patreon. Boom. Oh All wait, right. I have a banner I could put up. Oh, cool. Is it multicolored with flashing lights? Oh, see, that's lame. I mean, granted, I mean, this is the first cup banner, but that's as lame as this one. No, it's not. It's not that lame. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Here. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't even spell whistle kick right. The beauty of live, guys. There we go. How's that? Patreon.com slash whistle kick. Again, it's not multicolored or blinking lights. It doesn't oh, do man. that. It doesn't do blinking lights. See, now maybe if we had more Patreon subscribers, we could get better software. <laughs> I don't know that we want <laughs> blinking light software. All right, fine. All right, are you ready for question two? Uh, only if you don't want to add in Gabe or or Jenny's follow-up from the chat. He, you can see the chat, right? Uh, yeah, because I'm here on my iPad as well. Oh, uh, can you not see it from... Oh, interesting. No, I can't. Okay. This is our first time. Doing oh, do you think the Miyagi quote, no bad student, only bad teacher? Oh. Yeah, so there was a quote, there was a quote in the Karate Kid series, the Karate Kid franchise, that uh, no bad student, only bad teacher. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I disagree. Because if we're looking at it in the context of that direct relationship, there are bad teachers for specific students. There are bad students for specific teachers. If you're assuming that the student is infinitely flexible or the teacher is infinitely flexible, I'll agree. But that's not the case. If we take the example of the small child who is using the skills that they're developing potentially in a bad way, that kid's going to need a heck of a lot more time with that teacher, potentially more time than is available. doesn't mean that it's not possible, but it may not be probable or realistic. Okay. Yeah, I, I could see that. 
All right. Are you ready? That are you ready for question two? Let's do question two. All right. Question two. Oh, I gotta turn my phone on. All right. Here we go. Right question again. two. Okay. This this one comes from uh, Chris Rickard. Uh, and his question is, what are the telltale signs that a new student has trained before? And how would you handle a student who comes in and says they haven't? Mm. All right. Telltale signs usually have to do with proprioception, especially in my experience, unilateral movement. Most people who play sports typical high school sports don't have as much experience moving their arms independently in repetitive ways. You know, like think about like punching, bam, 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 right? Like that's not a, a movement pattern that happens a lot in traditional sports, especially with kicking. If someone's able to pick their foot up and they're able to alternate kicks, that's a, that's a really good sign. It could be indicative that they're just a natural athlete and they have a really good understanding of their body. But I'll, I'll, I can usually, you can usually tell, you can usually tell not in the way they move or in the way they respond to other people's movements. It's not, it's not 100%, but they usually give you a good idea. Now, if that person says that they haven't trained, there are a couple reasons that it could be. You know, it could be that they're embarrassed that they've had so little training, they don't want to admit it. Or it could be that they trained so long ago and they've forgotten so much that they consider themselves to be a brand new student or they don't want you to know where they trained because the instructor that they had ended up becoming known as a not such a good person right there are so many reasons that we could point to and say i understand why that person is trying to to hide the fact that they've trained before and i feel like there's there's kind of an unspoken part three here of like what do you do with that yeah which is just the same thing you do with every other student. You give them a safe space to train. You know, maybe you pull them aside after their first class and say, you know, there might be some stuff you're not willing to share with me. That's totally okay. If you want to share with me at some point, I'm happy to listen. Based on what I've seen of you, here's what we need to keep in mind, right? If that person, let's say, has enough technique that they are stronger or faster than other students starting at the same time, you may need to point that out. Hey, whether you realize it or not, whether you're hiding something from me or not, you are stronger than the other people who are our recent additions to this class. Please do not use your strength or your speed or whatever without awareness. It's something we need to be aware of for the safety of everyone. Stuff like that. Other than that, like, I think you evaluate, you handle them the same way you handle everybody else. If you're not constantly evaluating your students to make sure that they're doing okay, that they're progressing, that they're not harming others or limiting others' progress, I, I think you're doing it wrong. Cool. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, you know, there, like you said, there, there may be a multitude of reasons why someone might not yeah. want to divulge. Um, I think, you know, obviously the most harmful one is that you know, the, the back in the, the 70s, people would come in and test other schools and, you know, like that sort of thing doesn't, to my knowledge, really happen much anymore. Um, but there are schools that think it happens. Yeah. And yeah. there are individuals that think it happens. When I started uh, my most recent school, which I, was, I wasn't there very long, I went in and intentionally downplayed the experience that I had. Because I want, I, when you've trained a long time, I don't mean five years, but when you've trained for decades and you know that you're going to step into a class where the majority of the instruction is coming from someone who is trained for a small fraction of that time, doesn't mean there isn't anything to learn. Doesn't mean I'm not willing to learn from them. Yep. But it does mean, and I've, I've had this happen a number of times where people start to treat you differently. They get nervous. They're teaching and then they're looking to see, like, how are you responding to this thing that I'm teaching? Yeah. And I didn't want that, you know, so I kind of sandbagged it a little bit. Yeah. And and I get that. I mean, I we were talking earlier last night. Uh, I went to a Taekwondo class mm -hmm. at a school that I had never been to before. I have a, a very good friend who trains at this particular school. 
Uh, and she and you know said, I'm more than welcome to come anytime. So I went last night and I brought my white belt mm -hmm. because in uh, in the dojo that I currently train in, that's the etiquette that when you go to a new sure. school, you don't bring your black belt. Sure. And I know the instructor at this Taekwondo school. I have met him a couple of times. Um, and my friend let them know that I was coming. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in, you know, he came right up and, you know, I, I spoke with him and he asked me if I had my black belt. I said, I didn't, I didn't even bring it. He said, Oh, you're welcome to wear it. Uh, but I didn't have it with me, which was fine. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no announcement to the school, to the, the rest of the class, who I was, which is fine. I didn't expect an announcement. Like I was kind of there just to work out and try something new and different because yeah. I don't currently train in Taekwondo. But at the end of class, one of the newer students came up and said, you've trained before, haven't you? And I said, yes, I, I have. And she said, well, it was obvious. You know, we, we had um, just, you know, we were doing some some techniques and things. And it's hard to not show that, you know, unless I was going to pretend to be bad, which right. would is a totally different discussion. Yes. Um, but, yeah, you know, I was, you know, I was just there as a white belt. But I wasn't really a white belt. Yep, I get it. Cool. Uh, we should talk about giving away some stuff. Oh, yeah. Review love, time. Who Review doesn't time. love free stuff? Yeah, so one of the things we're doing with these Q&A episodes is we're reading a review and we're encouraging people to leave reviews. And the two best places, Apple Podcasts and Facebook, facebook.com slash whistlekick. If you go to the Apple Podcast app from your iPad or your iPhone, those are the easiest ways to get to it. Uh, you cannot do it from a computer without iTunes. iTunes is a pain in the butt. I'm not expecting anyone's going to download iTunes just to leave a review if you're uh, an Android person. But if you choose to, thank you. I appreciate it. We have been mentioning Google reviews in the past, but uh, those it actually doesn't look like Unless I'm missing something, Google doesn't break out podcast reviews separately from just standard brand reviews. Mm. So, um, you know, we're not going to we're not going to lean on that at this point. We'll ask for those in the future. This is a, a review that goes back to earlier this year. You guys were really go ahead. Hang on. Yeah, it, it's it's not it's not Daniel Ham, is it? It's not. It's not. Okay. okay. Just checking. In, unless he's leaving reviews under other names now. Oh, OK which which we do not condone yeah no but congratulations daniel on winning the last one two in a row yeah 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 because we didn't have a good system for tracking this and we really still don't but we'll figure it out <laughs> all right so this comes from wordman 92 so whoever wordman 92 is email me jeremy at whistlekick.com and we're going to send you a, a code for a gift, essentially a gift certificate to the whistlekick store great martial arts podcast i should move this where i can read it Hold on, mouse. There we go. I've been interested and involved off and on with the martial arts since I was five. This podcast not only deals with the mechanics, but also the martial arts as a lifestyle. I've not always trained, but the way of life has never left me. This podcast offers much broadly to the listener. I highly recommend it. Well, thank you, Wordman92. And let's face it, if, if you have not left reviews and you'd like free whistle kick stuff, uh, now's the time. Now is the time to leave reviews because we're not getting hit with a bunch of them. And as more and more start coming in, you know, we're not going to give discounts to everyone, but we will maintain a percentage. So if we're getting, you know, five reviews, we'll give out probably one or two. But if we're getting 50 reviews, yeah, I have no problem giving out 10 because the they help us that much. We can put a yeah. dollar amount on it. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. So if uh, if you are Word Man ninety two ninety two, get in touch. Get some Jeremy free stuff. .com. I'll send you the yeah. code. Thank you, and thank you to everyone who's left reviews in the past. All right. So question Next. number three. This Let's comes from from good friend of the show, Francis Cordon. Francis. Um, this question is: If someone was to approach you to learn self defense purely with no preconceptions of what that means what would you what would your advice be what type of resources would you recommend it depends dramatically on how much time they're going to put in do they want to learn self defense in a day a week or do they want to train at a traditional martial arts school indefinitely but their why is 
they're the first reason on their list is self-defense. What I advise is so dramatically different. If someone's coming and they want to learn a few things as quickly as possible, that's seeking out a decent instructor and doing some private training, you know, an hour or two. I can teach someone an hour or two a handful of things that are more likely to be helpful than not having them. The other end of the spectrum, if somebody wants to train with their, their primary why is self-defense, then we can unpack what they might look for in a school. Can you read the question again? Yeah. I'm concerned I've gotten off track. No, no, absolutely. Uh, the question is, if someone wants to approach you to your to learn self-defense purely with no preconceptions of what that means, what would your advice be and what type of resources would you recommend? Okay. Um, so they're probably not going to end up at a standard traditional school with the word purely. So I'll retract all that stuff. I, it still does come down to time, but the tone of the question suggests it's something that they want to work on as they move forward. There are schools out there, though they're not common, that they're more combatives schools that will teach self-defense elements, think more like a Krav Maga style. Um, they'll blend in tool usage like, like firearms because mm -hmm. these all may be part of the equation depending on the specific implementation and the, the reason somebody wants to train self-defense. You know, if, if, if you're someone who has to learn self-defense because of your job, for example, you know, there, there are reasons why this is important. But if they have no preconceived notions, I think the place to start them is understanding violence. You know, wh whether you're reading some of the works from Rory Miller, whether you're reading some of the specific episodes we've had where we talk about or have guests on talking about violence and the violence. realities of violence. I think if you don't know the landscape, it becomes very difficult to identify and select what it is you want to take from it. So an exposure is critical. You know, I, I, I might make them watch all of the John Wick movies a few times. <laughs> you know, maybe they're watching The Raid on repeat and, and you know, I'm being playful here, but there's something to that, right? These are These are films that are closer to the reality of violence than Karate Kid or Ninja Turtles or a lot of other, you know, any, any Chuck Norris film. And so the more exposure someone has to material that is closer to realistic, the better they can choose what it is that is important to them. Uh, not specifically related to this, but there was somebody posted a question in a martial arts group this morning. Hey, I want to do this. They wanted to open a martial arts school. Should I open it in the local YMCA? And everybody came through from their own understanding of their own situations. Mm -hmm. Nobody but myself, and last I looked at the thread, still nobody else said, why don't you tell us more about your goals and how you want to teach and why you want to teach? Because those are all very relevant. Yeah, very if you don't understand the why you're never going to get. You're less likely to get the best solution shooting blind. OK, good. How was my time on that one? Woo, 411. Nice. Yeah, I'll take I'm it. Get, I'm getting there. All right. Um, let's talk about some programs. I was so kick ass. Oh, uh, so we, and go you ahead. should put the banner back up so people watching know what they're looking at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I missed that. I missed that banner. Where'd it go? And if people, you know, there's you know, four or five people watching. If you've got uh, any questions that you want me to ask Jeremy, feel free to send them along. They can be fun. They can be silly. They can be serious. It doesn't matter. Now or later. You know, yeah, if it's now not now, later. we can roll it into episode 11 uh, for this. So we've got four training programs. We've got... We've got a strength and conditioning program. We've got a speed development program. We have an, in, uh, an endurance program. We've got a flexibility program. And many of you know that I have had the good fortune to train with and earn rank with Bill Wallace. 
I have a testing promotion coming up. If you know anything about Bill Wallace, you know that flexibility is kind of important to him. So what am I doing to prepare my flexibility? Well, I, I literally wrote a program, so I'm following my program. Am I following it to the letter? No, because I understand the principles in it well enough that I can take aspects, right? And that's, I think, the, the key to any of the programs that we do is if you've gone through them a few times, you can make modifications that get you where you need to go better. You understand you. I understand these programs. That's why I wrote them. So if you take the two and you combine it, you're good to go. Oh, and the flexibility program is completely free. I was just about to ask. Yeah. I was just about to ask. It costs a lot zero of Zero dollars. It's negative zero dollars. So if someone doesn't like it, you'll refund them their money I back. I will give them double their money back. That is a guarantee. Just the flexibility program. I actually will. If somebody is unhappy with any of the programs that we do, I, I'll refund you. Not six years later, but yeah. If, if you if you do it, if you show me that you went through the program and you didn't get more flexible or stronger or faster or your cardio isn't amazingly improved, prove to me that you did that. Yeah. Not only will I give you your money back, we'll go back to the drawing board and I'll figure out why. I'll probably end up giving you a free program that I custom designed for you to figure it out. But guess what? We've refunded zero because they work. That Let's says something. Out. That says something. All right. So we've got one more question, which actually Gabe dropped in the chat just now, cool. which is All great. Right, let's do it. Okay. So uh, I want you to, it, we're going to use your mind's eye right mm -hmm. now. You ready? You are Jeremy Lesniak. You're a brown belt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're, you've been competing at tournaments all through the spring. It's now the middle of the summer. You mm -hmm. get your black belt. Mm -hmm. You have a competition next week. You are, and you've got more competitions coming up for the rest of the season. You have been given the option to continue to finish the season as a brown belt or compete in the black belt division, which you now are. Mm -hmm. What do you, what, what, what would your suggestion be to that person? It depends on how that tournament season is implemented. If we're talking about something where there's points being earned, those ratings organizations usually have a way of handling this because it's not like it's uncommon. People rarely earn their black belt over, you know, Christmas break. So if there's a way to handle it, given the rule set, you do whatever that says. If there is not, or there are no points, I think the right thing to do is to compete as a black belt because if you are a black belt, you are a black belt. You should compete as a black belt. It's the same reason that if I start over at a new school and I'm a blue belt, I'm not stepping in the, the ring. I'm not stepping into the competition ring as a blue belt. It's unfair. I have earned a black belt. And to represent myself as something otherwise is, you know, it's, it's not ideal. This is why more and more I'm pulling back on the idea of rank and competition. I, I, there are, um, there are competitions out there. Shout out to Adam Grogan and his crew, at the Northeast open where they, they have guidelines based more on time than they, than on rank. If you've been doing it, you know, for five, I think five years is the top tier. If you've been training for five years or more, you're in the black belt division, regardless of what's around your waist. Interesting. And, and, and I, I think that there's some, there's a lot of logic in there. I had something similar in terms of age. When I was competing, there was an age split that I went from one group to the next. I think it was like 14 to 15 when I was competing and my birthday's in June. Depending on the competition, because there were multiple ratings organizations at the time, one of them wanted you to keep your age for the whole calendar year. The other wanted you to move up and bring your points with you. So it created some confusion. We had to talk to people and get, get that all figured out. But in again, unless it, unless you're stacking points, it doesn't really matter. If I if I I believe firmly, whether you want to call it iron sharpens iron or whatever, that by being around better people, you're going to get better. 
if you've earned a black belt and your goal in competition is to improve by stepping up into the black belt division, even though you're probably going to get spanked, you're going to progress much faster than being at the top of the brown belt division. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Um, you know, again, points with standing, yeah. what would be your rationale for staying in the brown belt division to win and get a trophy? Is that why you're competing? Like if it is, maybe you rethink why you're competing. Well, and there are people for whom that is important, and I'm not going to take that away from them. My why and what I would recommend is your why does not eliminate the relevance there. Some people, you know, what if somebody starts the year and they say, you know what, My, I, I've I've been a brown belt for three years and I've gotten trounced the last two years, three years, and my goal for the year is to earn a, my first ever trophy for competing through the year. And, you know, now they're halfway through the year and they're like, that goal was the thing that was motivating me. Yeah. Yep. Right. I could make a case for that at that point. All right. I, I, I guess I do see that. It's not something that should be done in the dark, though. Yeah. You know, and it sounds like given Gabe's question here, it wasn't. It was done with some understanding. But but I'll be honest. I've I've known people that had certain rank, competed as lower rank because of certain reasons. This is something that actually gets thrown around as criticism in some of the BJJ community, that people will hold off on being promoted because they have a competition coming up and they don't want to get bumped up to compete with the next group. Hmm. Cool. Iron sharpens iron. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm with you wholeheartedly. Excellent. That was our last question for the day. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for, for tuning in. We had some folks join us live. It makes it a lot of fun. I appreciate all of you. If you have questions for the next one, we do these once a month. Email Andrew at WhistleKickMartialArtsRadio.com. Don't send them to me because I'm not supposed to read them ahead of time. Right? Yeah, I'm I don't want Jeremy to know. No, no, these are secret. If you love what we do, if you want to support us and what we do, you've got a number of ways to do it. The best one, the one we ask for the most, Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick, where you can be a bunch of stuff back. Of course, you can also use the code podcast15 to buy anything at whistlekick.com. We bring you two shows a week. Hopefully you find some value in them. And if you do, well, great. Share it with other people. Help us grow. Help us support and grow and sustain the traditional martial arts community. It's why we do what we do. Thank you, all of you. Live, later, audio, video, doesn't matter to me. The fact that you engage makes me happy. So, Andrew, until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day.